That's so brilliant! This video is sponsored by Case Filters. One of the base requirements for getting a masterpiece in photography is that we engage the viewer with the photograph. And we are used to doing a couple of things to achieve that. But what gets quite often overlooked is the impact of the aspect ratio on the viewer's experience. But this is really, really important. In fact, it can make or break a photo. Hi my friends, very nice to see you. Before we start, just quickly, I have a giveaway for you and I want to give it to every one of you. So get sure to watch the entire video. Well, let's dive in. In my experience, the usage of aspect ratio gets often misunderstood. Or let's say, it is not used to its full potential. Basically, there are two things we should consider. I will start with the obvious one and after that I will give you a pro tip. What I often see is that many photographers use just the aspect ratio which is given by their camera. Because yeah, maybe it feels wrong for them to change the format. But what gets quite often overlooked here is different sensor formats lead to different aspect ratios in the photos. So full frame on APS-C format for instance uh, has a 3 by 2 format, a micro four thirds has 3 by 4 and an established ratio for medium format is 4 by 5. So this means when you always just use the aspect ratio that is given by your camera, your photography would change just with changing cameras. And that's a bit weird because the camera is just meant as a tool, right? We, we use it to, to craft an image. And I often say this in my videos, the first thing I do is when I'm building up the composition, I build the image in my head. In the first instance, it is just an idea, an image idea, an imagination if you want. And then I grab my phone and yeah, I work on a concept for my potential photo. I simply try with my phone to find out which options would work for me. And also the phone has another uh, aspect ratio than my camera. In the final stage, I grab my camera and I take the shot to craft it. And why in the world should I use then the aspect ratio that is given by my camera? It doesn't make all that much sense, right? Again, we are talking about a masterpiece in fine art photography. We are not talking about one of 100 photos in a wedding album or something like that, where we want to have uh, every photo in the same ratio. We are talking about a piece of art. Now, the first thing to consider is that not every element in a scene adds to the composition. It depends on what we want our images to say. So it is very, very important to think about which elements you want to include and which you want to exclude from your composition. I made a radio video about that and I will uh, link it up here for you. The point is, we can change the perspective to include or exclude uh, particular elements, but what gets often overlooked is we can also change the aspect ratio. Just to grab out things that don't add to our composition. Again, that's the obvious thing. The pro tip will come a little bit later in this video. Let me show you some quick examples. In this video here, the left tree didn't add anything to the scene, so I grabbed it almost out. Same with this tiny part here at the right hand side. By the way, it had also been possible to grab just from one side on the left hand side for instance, but you know, lenses tend to be sharper in the center and a little bit softer at the edges and yeah, this is why I tend to crop on both sides rather than just on one. Or in this image here from Alpetes you see the meter in the foreground didn't add anything, so I just cropped in from the bottom. As the sky was a bit of a variable in this case, I cropped in just from the bottom to show more of the sky. And I decide on things like that already out on location. That's so important for me and uh, even necessary when you really want to nail the composition. You can't crop around however you want. I mean, yeah, you, you could, but in <laughs> my experience, it, it is not likely then to get a masterpiece. It's also the reason why I hate to crop my image for Instagram, by the way. Yeah, uh, Instagram allows just a ratio from uh, 4 by 5 on a, a portrait orientation image. So Instagram was definitely not developed by a fine art photographer and it is also not really developed for fine art photographers, in my opinion. But however, I'm drifting away, that's another topic. 
Now, we talked about cropping out things that don't add to a composition, and this changed the aspect ratio, obviously. The image I showed you were photographed with a full-frame camera, which has a 2x3 format sensor, but I cropped them more to something like 4x5 and 60x9, but I didn't really use these clean aspect ratios. These numbers are not important for me to be understand. They are not important for the viewer. I just dropped in a way as it aids most to the composition independent of any numbers. One aspect I hear quite often here is when you want to print your image and you want to frame them afterwards, yeah, uh, frames in standard format would be cheaper. But yeah, I mean, I have to say when I have invested many hours into planning, into preparing a photograph where I have maybe yeah, waited for hours at a location whilst other photographers came already up because they didn't believe that the sun would, uh, yeah, res or the, the clouds would resolve and the sun would break through or something like that. I think images like that simply deserves a tailor-made frame. Yeah, using a standard format would make the image not better, it, it would make it worse when there are elements uh, in, in or areas included that don't add. And I don't want that of course, I want to get out the best possible image. I invested time for planning, exploring, taking the shot and I had to pay fuel maybe to get to the spot. I, I need to pay a campsite maybe in some time, so a hotel room. Why in the world should I try to save 10 or 20 euros then when it comes down to choose a good frame? My friends, a good fine art photograph simply deserves a tailor-made frame. And that's also a standard in fine art photography, by the way. You know, I offer some of my best images as limited edition prints on my website. And the paper is a free or a two through, but uh, when anyone buys a print, you will have also a tailor-made frame as well. Some photographers offer already finished frames to the image. I don't do that because I simply see the frame as a kind of interface between the image and reality. Your living room, for instance. The frame should fit to the image, but also to your living room, to your furniture. So there's really no reason to stick to a common aspect ratio like 2x3 or 4x5 or whatever, just to get a cheaper frame on Amazon. So my tip here is underline your image by using an aspect ratio that supports your image. I mean, sometimes the aspect ratio of a camera is randomly the best ratio, but we should not uh, get forced by the ratio. And before I will give you the pro tip, my friends, if you like this video, please give me a thumb up. You know, it helps me, it helps the algorithm, and it helps also other photographers out there to find this video better on YouTube. Thank you, therefore. So don't be afraid of changing the aspect ratios of your image. There's really no need at all to use standard formats. When an element or an area doesn't add anything to your composition, just drop it out. But it is not only all about cropping out elements, there is more. You know, one of the base requirements for getting a masterpiece is to engage the viewer. So visual weight and visual flow are very important methods to get control over the viewer size. I will not go in detail here, I made already a video about that and I will link it in the end of this video. But what gets quite often overlooked is that the aspect ratio has a massive impact on the viewer's experience. Just think about a square, a common square, not a photograph, just a square. How do we read it? How do we scan it with our eyes? Where do we start and where do our eyes move to? That's totally variable, right? And this is why square images tend to look boring because we don't know how to read the image. I mean, I don't want to mess up with the square photos or so, it is possible to get square images to work, but it is definitely difficult, because there is no given direction for our eyes. A rectangle instead offers the advantage that the viewer gets invited to look along the rectangle, vertically or horizontally. This is how we get a kind of base flow, if you want, just given by the orientation. And the longer the rectangle is, the more the viewer has to move his head yeah, to take the whole scene in. With a, a square crop, you can take everything in just with one side. But with a long rectangle instead, the viewer has to engage deeper with the image to consume it. 
I mean, this could be yeah, also dangerous because when there's nothing of interest in the image, the viewer will probably stop to engage. So deciding on a ratio is not only all about what to include and what to exclude, it is also about if we want our viewers to gather their whole scene in one as fast as possible or if we want our viewers to engage deeper with the scene. And you guessed it already, there is no right or wrong. It is just one more element, one more method in composition that has an impact on the viewer. Which ratio I finally choose depends on the composition and on the story my image should tell. In this image here, the viewer has to move his head to take the scene in. It had been possible to crop in here what would work just from the compositional side, but with a crop like this, the viewer is much more engaged. Important is just that we don't overdo it, of course. When areas don't really add to a composition, the viewer yeah, has nothing to engage with it. Um, and then he will just yeah, leave the photo. So we have to bring both together. We can crop uh, to exclude elements, but we can also support the base flow horizontal or vertically. Important is to understand that cropping has really a big impact on the viewer's experience. And of course, Sometimes we are forced to use a, spe a specific aspect ratio and then we have to live with compromises. So it's also important to know how to deal with compromises as well. Just a quick example. Over the last time I got some questions from you if I could offer some of my images as wallpapers. You know, desktop back uh, backgrounds for Windows, Apple computers and laptops and something like that. And the thing is, therefore, the image need to be exactly in 16 by 9 format. I tried for this and it was so hard to crop exactly to that format it wasn't possible to pick out just the best image. It was all about picking out the best image, which are, which are cropable actually. Yeah, I can't crop every image, every existing aspect ratio, because there is a good reason why I decide on a specific ratio. Just quickly, in this image here, I cropped a bit from the sky, but not too much as I wanted to keep this important dark cloud up here. I also cropped from the bottom and I know that the hat is quite close to the edge, but I can live with that as the visual weight of the illuminated sky is that high that we don't look out of the frame. In this one, I crop quite close to the mountains, but they build nice horizontal, so it's not the biggest problem in the world that they are yeah, that close to the edge. They keep us nicely inside the frame. Or in this image here, I considered cropping at the position where the soft farmhouses in the distance are not destroyed by cutting through them. And the vertical balance between foreground hills and distance hills also work for me. So you asked me for the wallpapers, I created some. I will put you a link down in the description where you can easily download them. And yeah, that's the giveaway. I will not take any money therefore, of course. So aspect ratios have a really big impact on our photos. I would even say, yeah, it is the base for a good composition. But it's really, really important then to consider also visual weight and visual flow to get really a masterpiece in there. And I made already a comprehensive video about that. I will link it here for you. And friends, I hope you liked this video. If yes, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to tune in next week. There will come a fantastic video as well. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.